the most controversial and viral audition video on BGT since Susan Boyle. Was it a fix? Well, here's a serious question. Why the heck would Lauren Allred, the voice of the Oscar-nominated, Grammy Award-winning song Never Enough, audition for Britain's Got Talent? Why? So many fans of BGT were outraged and called her audition a fix, and yet more proof that the show was, quote, fake. To a point that Simon Cowell had to come out of his bunker and speak up. I'll share his response and tell you how one of Hollywood's best kept secrets went from a Simon Cowell no to a BGT golden buzzer yes. Lauren Allred, then and now, that's what's hot. What's up guys, it's Billy here at Talent Recap. I know you've heard the multi-platinum smash hit song, Never Enough. It's from one of my favorite movies, The Greatest Showman. It is also the most sung song on these talent competition shows that we all love. In the movie, James Bond actress Rebecca Ferguson plays the character Jenny Lynn and sings a song. But newsflash, she's not the actual singer. Yep, it was Lauren Allred, lifelong aspiring singer and Team Adam contestant from The Voice. And now, BGT has changed her life while stirring up controversy around the world. The show's fans have cried out that the show is fake. Let's break this down and then answer the question. Was this a fix? At the end of the video, stick around because we're gonna answer your most searched questions about Lauren Allred. Lauren was born in Pittsburgh, PA, and then raised in a Mormon household in Salt Lake City. Born to both classical musical parents, her father, Dr. Brady Allred, director of the Pittsburgh Bach Choir, as well as a Salt Lake City choral artist conductor. Her mother, Dr. Carol Ann Allred, is a renowned classical soprano. Lauren's mom was performing as the soloist for Mozart's C minor mass while pregnant with baby Lauren listening inside her mom's belly days on end. So they feel she was destined to sing. Lauren knew at 11 years old she wanted to be a singer when she heard pop legend Mariah Carey sing. So she stepped outside of her family's comfort zone of her classical soprano roots and suddenly wanted to become a belter. Alert! In classical households, this is a big no-no and very taboo, so I can only imagine what it must have been like. Lauren has been quoted to say that in the beginning, her parents didn't like it or get it. When she would practice, they thought she was hurting her voice with this new way of singing, and they take no credit for it. They say it was all her. Eventually, they stepped on board and began to support her. Her mother said that one day she sang a choir solo at school and her dad Brady looked at her amazed and said, where did that come from? Fast forward, now her father says when he goes to work, he has a young girl screaming at him with excitement just because he's Lauren's father. American Idol, how was Lauren originally discovered? Let's rewind. Lauren wanted to be on American Idol since it premiered in 2002, but auditions were out of state, and the rules stated that you needed a guardian, and her mom couldn't or wouldn't take her. So when Lauren turned 18, she knew it was her time and showed up at 4.30 a.m. to get in line with hundreds of hopefuls. She made it through the first round of auditions, but eventually got her first no from the man, Simon Cowell. Did that stop her? A uh, no. Determined as ever, she started out by singing and posting videos on YouTube and was discovered by Neo. Yep, you heard that right. Neo found her and got her signed to Island Def Jam Records. Lauren will tell you herself that she was so excited, but this move would also later hurt her as she was shelved by the record company. Lauren also stated that during her time at Island Def Jam Records that she was sexually harassed. She said that there were executives that abused their power and told her they could make her career if she did certain things. Lauren said she stood strong and then was quickly dropped from the label. Lauren insists it wasn't anyone on Neo's team, so just to be clear, Neo's one of the good guys. The good that came out of it was the producers of The Voice reached out to the label looking for young, talented singers, and she suddenly found herself on her second TV talent show, The Voice. Lauren's incredible voice turned two chairs and she ended up on Team Adam. Not to push my button. I think that I'm gonna have to go with Adam on this. 
But her experience on The Voice really traumatized her. Lauren says that the whole season she was the only person viewers knew nothing about and that they didn't play half of her pre-recorded performances and those performances didn't even make episodes. Lauren slayed on The Voice but eventually was eliminated in the first week of the live playoffs. That was her second big no. Lauren said it was an amazing experience, but for an introverted person, it was mentally exhausting and high anxiety all the time. She described feelings of being picked apart during the show and that the producer said she didn't act bubbly enough and she felt she didn't fit the persona they had in mind for her. Okay, this I don't get because talent is talent and this woman's voice is otherworldly. After her stint on The Voice and feeling a little betrayed by the music industry, Lauren took a step back and focused on becoming a background studio session singer. She was comfortable being in the background and just happy to be working. Enter Pasek and Paul. Lauren began recording and working with the musical theater legends of La La Land and Dear Evan Hansen on musicals as an ensemble or guide vocal. She developed a nice relationship with them and continued to grow, so when she got the job as ensemble for The Greatest Showman, she would never have known what would happen next. As part of the ensemble, Lauren was then asked to again be the guide vocal for the song Never Enough. Pause. For those of you going, huh, what? Since the dawn of movie musicals, they've utilized guide vocalists to help teach the actors the songs, but this is where it all changed. The actress, Rebecca Ferguson, does sing, but when she heard Lauren Allred's version of Never Enough, she said she could never do it justice and told the producers she wanted to keep Lauren's voice on the song. The part that is astonishing is Rebecca agreed not to just have Lauren as a ghost singer. A ghost singer is normally a voice that is heard, but you don't know who it is. They get paid a flat rate and then disappear into the shadows. It has been one of Hollywood's biggest secrets for years, like Marnie Nixon, who was the voice in West Side Story, King and I, and My Fair Lady. You heard her, but you saw actresses lip syncing to her voice. Not this time. Rebecca was proud to give Lauren credit, and so the secret was out, and Lauren's life began to change. As the song became a smash hit, Lauren did get work with David Foster, Andrea Bocelli, and more, but because she wasn't seen in the film, and it wasn't highly publicized that she was the voice, it still didn't secure a solo record deal or help her cross into that next level of fame. Enter BGT in 2022. Lauren watched as the song she sang inspired millions around the world and helped others at AGT and BGT to secure wins and record deals. Lauren decided it was time to step out of the background and put a name and a face to the song she sung. So she went to BGT to give it a go. And let me tell you, OMG. When Lauren stepped on the stage, she shocked the world when she said, I think some of you guys have actually heard my voice, but you don't know my face. Yep. Even Simon was gobsmacked. I sang the song Never Enough on The Greatest Showman. Oh my, oh my God! Now the audience and the judges must be thinking, surely this is a trick, or maybe she doesn't sing as good live. So everyone waited with bated breath, and then she opened her mouth. I'm trying to hold my breath. You could tell Lauren was nervous in the beginning, but then she began to soar, sending chills up everyone's spines including mine. By the end, the audience and the judges leapt to their feet and Simon said it was one of the most incredible audition moments he's ever experienced on the show. And then Amanda Holden pressed her golden buzzer making BGT history. That night, the YouTube video of her performance went viral and spread around the world breaking records. It is now the most viral audition video since Susan Boyle's audition 14 years ago. So that would normally be great, right? Wrong. Not in this case. Most of the feedback was positive, but of course there was a huge part of the population that was outraged, saying it isn't fair because Lauren is a professional. They called the show fake, a setup, and a fix. This outcry didn't fade away and was creating headlines worldwide, so BGT producers finally spoke out and said this, Whilst most people will have heard the infamous Greatest Showman track, Lauren is not a household name and she deserves her spot on the BGT stage. 
We hope that such articles will not count against somebody who is well deserving of this opportunity. It's fantastic that Lauren is now able to step out and stand in her own right to be the face and not just the voice of one of the most well-known tracks of all time. This didn't stop the anger. So then, the big man, Simon Cowell, broke his silence and came out to defend Lauren after her semi-final performance. He said, it's both a blessing and a curse when you're known for singing one of the biggest songs of all time. And actually, I think what you've done by even coming on this show is incredibly brave. I also know you've got a bit of stick in the media saying, oh, it's a fix because you've been on another show, but that's the whole point of shows like this. You give people a second chance. He then admitted he wanted her to win the semifinal and to make it through to the final. And of course, with a public vote, Lauren sailed through to the finale. My opinion is that it is fair and it's not a fix. The music industry is one of the hardest industries to have success in. It's not a normal stable job. One day you can be at the top or working and the next day struggling for years to get work. Artists that have constant success like Celine Dion, Mariah Carey, Michael Jackson are very rare and it takes determination to get there. There's nothing wrong with Lauren trying to become more successful and trying to cement her place in the music industry. I admire the fact that she's had so many no's and she stepped back and then came back stronger. That discipline and determination should be rewarded, not frowned upon, because it sends a message to never give up. Shows like BGT and AGT inspire the world and give people, all people, that fresh opportunity. So I say, do your thing, Lauren. Keep going until you get there and push those haters aside. You are a super talent and we here at Talent Recap can't wait to see what you do next. We can report that Lauren is recording now and has released two EPs, Late Bloomer and Till I Found You, and she has another one on the way. She's been touring with Andrea Bocelli and has some exciting things on the horizon. So what do you think? Was it fair for Lauren to audition? Do you think it was a fix? I really want to know your opinion, so tell me in the comments below. All right, guys, these are your most searched questions about Lauren Allred. Here we go. Where did Lauren Allred finish on BGT? She finished ninth place, but I believe that's because of all the controversy, because she should have won. Is Lauren Allred married? No, Lauren is not married, and what's really crazy is she's never been seen in public with a partner, so the question is out there, is she with somebody, is she overly private? Who knows? I'm available, Lauren, if you're looking. <laughs> okay. Does Lauren Allred have curly hair? Uh, that's an odd question, but the answer is yes, and she displayed her curls in her music video right here. How tall is Lauren Allred? She's 5'7". Does Lauren have a record deal with Simon Cowell? And the answer is no. It's been rumored that she does. That was part of the whole controversy when she was on the show. People thought it was just so Simon could get her on a record deal, but she's actually releasing a song called Last Thing I'll Ever Need, and it's an independent release. So no record deal. What is Lauren Allred's net worth? Okay guys, it's reportedly $2 million, but I have to tell you, that stuff sometimes is so ghetto, it's so wrong. If you Google my name, it says I am worth $5 million, and that's a lie, because I ain't got 5 million bucks. What do Lauren Allred's feet look like? You guys are weird, moving on. Is that an actual? Yes. That was one of the most searched questions. What do her feet look the like? Most one of her most searched questions. What is Lauren Allred's nationality? She's white. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> She's Caucasian, but her family has an Ancestry.com site and it says that there's Native American in her bloodline and she's related to Gloria Allred and Barack Obama. Is that crazy? While you're here, be sure to subscribe to our channel, click the notification bell, and follow Talent Recap on all platforms. Also, visit our site for all the latest talent show news. If you want to follow me, you can follow me at Billy Blanks Jr. on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Billy Blanks Jr. and now you know what's hot. Hey, what are you doing tonight? Well, I think you should hit the subscribe button down below and then we can talk.